Hi everyone, Matt here, and today we are playing High Swap Brunson. Um, when we last left off, we finished Volume 10, and now we are starting Volume 11 of Pals and Promises Made and Broken. Another night, another long, long walk. Despite the blisters, you have started to feel truly optimistic. You've gotten a lot going. You've got a lot going for you these days. True, you're still technically a castaway on a hostile planet with absolutely no hope of re rescue. But if you're completely honest, Earth was pretty shitty too. Sure, 98% of everyone here is a psychopath who would rip your face off as soon as look at you. But it's the other 2% that are really going to make it all worthwhile. Malik Adalog or Linera Scal Scalby. Let's go with the person with the weird knives above their head. You've had such good luck making friends lately that you feel almost popular. But at the same time, you feel a strange sense of loneliness that new friendships or new friendship doesn't seem to penetrate. Maybe being the only one of your species light years away from home is starting to catch up with you. Or maybe you're starting to understand why popular kids in movies se sometimes seem so sad. Never trolls like you now. But do any of them truly know you? What you wouldn't give to hang out with someone you have real history with. Someone with whom you don't have to do the introductory dance of Yes, I'm clearly an alien. No, I don't know what's going on. Someone whom you could reminisce about old times. Someone you've hung out with more than once. Right now, you're on the outskirts of town, and the rocky outcrops surrounding you are familiar. I'm pretty sure that the entrance to the brooding caverns is somewhere, is around here somewhere. Heart beats a little faster. Vornia lives close to here, and talk about history. You two know each other deeply from hanging out once and then seeing her again in your ex mate Spirit's hive. Plus, you have a phone now. You have the power to text first. You get, you get out the phone Canal gave you. Look at you go, reading an alien language and operating alien technology just fine. Doesn't it make sense that you've learned how to read a new alphabet in weeks without anyone teaching you? Not really. But maybe your struggles with Spanish class in high school were just a fluke and you've been a secret linguistics, li linguistic genius the, this whole time. Barnett tes texts you back immediately giving you directions for how to meet her in the caves. You head down, but before the Jade Blood Hive is but before the Jade Blood Hive is a slight is a in Lola. But before the Jade Blood Hive is in sight, a troll emerges from the shadows. At first you think it's Bronya, but you freeze mid wave when this new troll steps into the light. Bronya doesn't wear glasses, and she has never glared at you like that. It's you! I remember you! You were down here a few weeks ago, bothering Bronya and distracting her when we almost had a loose stampede! Ouch! Is that really how Bronya has described your adventures together? Oh, it's neater. <laughs> Maybe it's silly for something that small to hurt your feelings when another recent friend nearly got you killed in Clown Church. But you like to think you and Bronya formed a real connection. She never made you feel like you were bothering her. A real connection? Is that why you think you can just come down here and text her? Holy shit, is Linera ringing Bronya's messages? Does Bronya know she's been doing that? That's not of your business. Bronya and I are best friends. I'm just looking out for her. She has a lot of cheap blood responsibilities. And doesn't need any shifty. Anyone, no, them. Anyone shifty coming in to disrupt her. You have to wonder if Bronya would agree with the statement made on her behalf, and you sure would like to see her in person and confirm for yourself. Oh, you'd like that, wouldn't you? Why don't you tell me? What's the nature of your relationship? Why should I allow you to hang out with her? As your text message so boldly suggested, bluffing and saved your ass in some bleak situations before, but you could also go on the offensive here. 
You're concerned about Bronya's privacy now, and as her friend, maybe you shouldn't just look the other way. <clears throat> what right does Linera have to creep on Bronya's phone? Puff up with all the self-righteousness you can muster. The nature of your relationship with Bronya is between you and Bronya. And you're not doing anything suspicious by wanting to see your friend. In fact, it seems a lot more suspicious that Linera is trying to intercept anyone who messages Bronya. What possible reason could she have to justify that? Well, I never! As I said before, I am Bronya's best friend. I take her relationship, I mean, right, my responsibility says friend, very seriously. Press the issue, narrowing your eyes and crossing your arms over your chest. Her responsibilities as a friend, huh? Sounds kind of... Fishy. Fishy? Are you serious right now? Are you really coming down here making fish puns? Like some kind of sea dweller? This is so suspicious. This is so suspicious. Who knows what Bronia decided to show you when you tricked her into trusting you. Not, not that we have anything to hide, but who knows? If you're at all associated with sea dwellers, then we have a pretty big problem on our hands, don't we? We've heard of sea dwellers by now, but none of your friends have talked about them much. Mostly you've gathered that they dwell in the sea. You don't know why it would be extra bad for you to be one of them, but it's clear you need to backpedal. Before you try to disown your choice of fish-related phrasing, Glinera advances on you. Obviously, I can't, you I can't let you talk to Bronya now! You're way too suspicious! I think you and I should have a private conversation instead. At least your life is uneventful when you're unconscious. When you come to, you're sitting on a chair with your wrists tied. As your eyes adjust to the darkness, you realize that you're in a similar cave than the big open caverns that led to the Jade Blood Hive. Light switches on, and you can see that the cave walls are lined with bookshelves, and there's a desk in the corner. There are books and notebooks and bulletin boards with what looks like outlines and study gu guides pinned to them. In front of you is Linera, holding a knife. Oh good, you're awake. This is my study cave in the Jade Blood Hive. It's harder to concentrate because people break the rules and I get irritated, so I come here to do homework. That's all, just homework. When you take a second look at the bulletin boards, you see that a lot of what Linera has pinned up are pictures of Bronya. There are a few pictures of Linera and Bronya together, but it's mostly just Bronya by herself. And even a couple blurry photos of Bronya and Elford. What are you looking at? There's nothing to see here. She brandishes the knife in your face. And okay, yeah, sure. She, now she, she and her gigantic knife have her full attention, and you are not looking at her creepy Bronya shrine anymore. I brought you here because your messages to Bronya were highly suspicious. I don't know you, and I don't trust you. You'd be trying to see Bronya for nefarious purposes. So I brought you here to vet you. Now we can talk about what your real intentions are. So you're definitely going to die in this cave, held captive by an unhinged jade blood who was convinced of your guilt from the moment you dared to text her best friend. That kind of sucks. Try so hard, and you got so far, then the end it didn't even matter. Oh, come on, stop playing the victim. If, I, you want is the, if anyone is the victim here, it's me. I try so hard to be there for Bronya as her best friend, but she, she doesn't even... Lenora stops abruptly. See her, lo her lips start to tremble before she turns her face away from you. Sharp tip of the knife flying out your throat droops a bit. It's digest de blah, blah. it's dejected swing takes it takes it dangerously close to your navel. And when you try to suddenly subtly lean backwards in your chair, Linera interrupts the noise of distress that escapes your mouth as a noise of sympathy. It's fine though. Really, it's fine. Our friendship is great. I wouldn't change anything about it. It's fine as long she, as she doesn't have any other friends. Because I'm her best friend. I'm 
her best friend. I, I should be the only one she needs. The nurse knife is now completely lowered, pointing at the floor. That gives you some hope. She seems to have forgotten about her sweet sea dweller suspicions. <coughs> Maybe if you can keep her talking about Bronya, the whole stabbing notion can be taken off the table and she might even let you go. You rack your brain for you rack your brain for all the knowledge of alternian relationship dynamics that you've managed to compile during your time on this planet. Best friends. They have a, they have a special word for that, right? Tell Linera that you're sure Bronia doesn't need anyone else. If she and Bronia are more rails, then Linera must be very special for her. To her. What? I never said we were more rails. That's not even the quadrant that I want her in. If you, uh, never mind. How dare you make assumptions? <laughs> Hello, knife point again. Oh shit. I meant to say that. You thought her relationship with Bronia was completely fine. You figured they must be in a quadrant together because you're a clueless alien. You're bad. I get why you would think that. It's probably so obvious that my, my feelings for her. I very forget. Minera hangs her head, and her shoulders shake. Tears roll down her cheeks, dripping onto her crisp shirt collar and the knot of her jade green tie. I know I don't have a chance. She does think of me that way. Her loyal friend and second in command. That's all I will ever be to her, no matter what. And I try to do a really good job at being her best friend. Because what else can I do? If I'm her best friend, then at least I'm still in her life. At least I mean something to her. Maybe it's the fact that Linera's knife hasn't come any closer to your, to any of your major arteries for a hot minute. Or maybe it's the tears. Either way, you feel sympathy encroaching on the monopoly on the monopoly that object terror had previously maintained in your brain's economy you've acted as a verbal sounding board or a sympathetic ear for some of your other troll friends while they dealt with crises of various kinds flipping into the role of therapist for someone who's holding you hostage at knife point is a new one for you but unfortunately it's not that much of a stretch Seems like young trolls on Alternia have, have to deal with these heavy life issues by themselves, feeling so alone that they're willing to turn to an alien stranger to help them work things out. Then again, maybe life is that grim and isolating for human teenagers too, and you just never noticed before. Maybe everyone's too mire, mired in their own shit to look up and realize that the moon Moo Beast's fecal matter is waist high for everyone around them, too. You clear your throat and speak with a bunch of. and speak with as much consoling gentleness as you can muster while your head still throbs from where Linero knocked you out. It seems like trying to be Bronya's best friend isn't making Linero very happy. Of course it isn't! Of course it isn't making me happy! I can't keep her from having other friends no matter how hard I try! She's amazing. Of course everyone wants to be your friend. Could you, apparently. You barely even had a chance to miss that knife before it's waving around again. Yikes. Your, your friendship with Bronia is nothing like her relationship with Linera. You don't count as any kind of competition. Bronia is one of many friends to you. And while you cherish her and support her endeavors, you appreciate the joy and fulfillment that can come from having many different friends instead of depending on a single person to meet all your emotional needs. Sounds fake. Why would I ever want any friends besides Bronya? She's my whole world. Okay, but it seems like it's painful for Linera to be relying on Bronya to be her whole world when Bronya isn't doing the same in return. Has Linera ever talked to Bronya about any of this? No. Never terrified to tell her how I feel. Being her best friend feels awful. awful. But losing her would be so much worse. I can't take that risk. But if Linera never talks to Bronya about her feelings, she'll always be unhappy because she wants more. Even if she thinks that it's unlikely that Bronya feels the same way, maybe open communication with her friend can help Linera process her feelings and move on. You know that Linera has a big heart, or blood pusher, 
and many find fault these that she doesn't deserve to be stuck in this unhappy, unrequited relationship purgatory forever. Wow, you really think I have fine qualities? Try very hard to, not to think about the glint of that knife. Sure, Linera has positive qualities. She seems loyal and well-organized and studious and caring. Some troll out there is going to want... Is going to want the same kind of closeness from her that Linera is looking for. She owes it to herself to take actions that could lead to happiness, happiness instead of being stuck in a sad situation forever. I don't know. Maybe you're right, or maybe you're wrong. But I don't want to move on. Even if I know I should. I just... I just want to be with Brodia forever! Linera crumbles to the ground. Crumples to the ground, dropping the knife and sobbing into her hands. It's hard to watch someone in this much distress and not want to help them. On the other hand, her misery has distracted her, and this might be your only chance to try and escape. Let's attempt comfort. You remember what you did for Polipa when she tried, when she was upset. Sitting in a chair with both your hands tied behind you doesn't make for ideal shushing, shush papping conditions. But maybe you can make the gesture. Then her eyes is huddled, crying on the floor. You think you can maybe get close enough to lean your knee against her back or something. Hopefully that would be interpreted in the same way as the classic palm-to-cheek move. You need your chair closer to her, but you lose your balance and wobble, then topple forward. Then Lenora's discarded knife is right there, sharp edge ready to plunge right into your incoming soft body. The Lenora moves quickly and grabs your chair and saves your life. Oh shit, that was a close one. You really could- you really could have died! She stares at the knife with huge round eyes, clearly shaken up about your near-death experience just now. Considering how often you nearly died these days, you feel more blase about it. But you're glad it's having an impact on her if it makes her rethink the whole kidnap and that and stab thing. I'm so sorry! I don't- I don't want you to actually die! I saw- I saw what you were doing when- with that chair when you fell. You were trying to, for the additional seed plunge in shush pap because I was upset. It was very kind of you to try and console me. Never really thought you were a sweet sea dweller, you know. Maybe what I'm doing is wrong. You look no knives now. <laughs> Minera sets her jaw with conviction and with one slash. Gets you free of your bonds. You get to your feet stumbling a bit because your leg fell asleep. Can't believe you're getting out of this situation without any blood loss. Feel positively elated about this turn of events, but Lenora still looks sad. You're free to go. You must think the worst of me after all this. Well, you're not going to lie, that wasn't the best start to a friendship you've ever had. But horrifyingly enough, it also wasn't the worst. Feel for Lenora. And you want to show her how a real friend making aficionado gets out there and, make, and meets people. You think making new friends could help her feel less clingy about Bronya? Oh, you would really do that for me? I'm not so sure about new friends. But you do seem to know what you're talking about. I don't know where to go with Linera to teach her how to meet new friends. She's probably a bit too uptight to enjoy the music clubs you've been to. And you don't think that trolls studying in the book hive would take kindly to a lot of a lot of loud friendly conversation. You decide to go to the cafe the adult word introduced you to. Thankfully, they're not having an excessive bodily force poetry night, since you're not sure that would be Linera's scene. There are a number of Krulians here, but you also spot a few indigos and teals and a cluster of defiant looking olive bloods with some yellows. I'll sing together. The crowd is overall less pierced and undercutted than it was when you were here with Elward, and the vibe is laid back, with all the trolls just sitting around and quietly chatting. Oh god, the knife bar is back. <laughs> you ordered the drinks, already taking for granted your newly acquired skill in reading troll language. Linera is fidgeting when you sit down with her. This may come as a shock to you, but I don't get out of the caverns very much. I don't have time. There's so much to, 
Learn about Jade Blood's life control reproduction. Prunia needs my help to maintain order. It's not very often that I have to, uh, interact with trolls of other blood colors. You're not sure what's making her uncomfortable. The trolls around here that are lower than her on the emo spectrum are those that are higher. You've worked out by now that jades are right in the middle. So maybe Linera identifies with neither the haves nor the have-nots. From, from what you remember, neutrality is a big concept with jades. You're sure, Linera, that it's natural to be a little nervous. Most people feel like that. Feel, most people feel like they're stepping out of their comfort zone when they make a new friend. If there's one thing you've learned as Alternia's resident make, friend-making expert, it's that terror and embarrassment are par for the course. That's worth it in the end. I'm not nervous or embarrassed. It's just, I don't know. Everyone seems disorganized and suspicious and untrustworthy and unknown. You have to bite your lip to keep from laughing. It's not even funny. It's just that Linera is hissing all her words and leaning in towards you and glaring at the rest of the room. The overall effect is weirdly endeared. Like someone put a 1950s school uniform off on a feral cat. Before you can try again to reassure her, a new troll ambles up to your table. She looks friendly. And that's a friendly amble. She's wearing glasses and carrying a book bag and has a teal symbol symbol on her chest. So she might be a she might be a nerd like Linera. This could be a good fr new friend match. Nuffrun. Hi guys. <laughs> I think I've seen you around before here before. Lola. Do you also study at the book hive? Open your mouth to invite this new friend to sit down, but before you respond, Linera interjects. That's not any of your business, is it? What do you even want to know? Obviously, anyone who goes to the book hive to study goes there for peace and quiet. So why would you think you can just bother us just because you've recognized us from there? Okay, okay, jeez. My bad, never mind. See you around, never. Just like that, go an opportunity... Her friendship has gone up in a puff of smoke. What was Linera thinking, being so rude? Then she wanted to learn how to make friends? I changed my mind, okay? There's no way I could be friends with any of the people here. I don't know them. Not like I know you. You're surprised to hear that Linera feels so positive about you when she was ready to stab you an hour ago. She, ex she takes your hands in both of her hands, being squeezing your fingers tight. I know we didn't get off to a great start. And that's my fault, but I can make it up to you. We're friends now, and we'll be friends forever. And I will call anyone who ever thi whoever even thinks about trying to fuck with you. This is not quite the lesson you had hoped to teach her about making friends, but maybe with her fierce loyalty and possessive streak spread out between you and Bronya, Lenora can be a little more low-key about being a friend to you both. The determined look in her eyes and the ominous glint of her glasses don't scream low-key, but change doesn't always happen overnight. And you believe in second chances. You believe that Linera will be capable of healthy friendship someday. Friendship. Okay. Attempt to escape. You look around to see if there's anything within reach that you could use to free your bound hands. On the desk a few feet away, you spot a spiral bound notebook with a nasty looking edge on its binding. Scoot your chair over, doing your best not to make any noise, but Linera is too busy wailing to notice regardless. Get a hold of the notebook and saw through the rope on your wrist. It's so hard to watch her and help her together. Albert don't doesn't deserve her. She was so mean. I know she's accruing, but I swear if she shows her face to the caverns again, I will go straight for her primary spurred artery. It's a good reminder that Linera is dangerous. You saw faster, and success and success. Your hands are now untied. Linera's back is turned to you while she gets up from the floor. Take a quick look 
at the notebook in your hands. It seems to be a carefully un annotated and organized scrapbook slash diary chronicling Linera's friendship with Bronya. On the one hand, it's a bit creepy in the context of how you're still held hostage by the person who made this. On the other hand, it does pull your heart it does pull out your heartstrings. But you keep a firm grip on those heart heartstrings because you've still got to get out of here. When Linera turns back to face you, you leap from your chair brandishing the scrapbook in front of you like a shield. If she comes any closer with that knife, you can destroy the scrapbook in an instant with your acidic spit. That's right, your alien autonomy has destructive powers that can vaporize Leonard's precious Bronya memories in seconds. No, you can't. What are you thinking? How dare you touch that book? For a terrifying second, you think she might lunge at you. But then Leonard steps to the side, giving you a straight shot for, to the cave exit. You scale your way toward it's freedom. You remember your phone. Lunar took it from you when you knocked when you when she knocked you out. And you don't know how she could how you could possibly get another one. No way! I'm not giving you anything you might use to contact Bronya. I would have you messaging her behind my back and trying to replace me as a best friend. Seems like nothing you said when you were tied up had any impact on her at all. Maybe forcing people at knife point to be a therapist doesn't result in quality therapy. Still feel bad for her, but it's time to break out the big guns. If Lenora doesn't return your phone, you will find another way to reach Bronya and you'll tell her everything. Not only the lowdown on Lenora's stalking and kidnapping tendencies, but also the truth about how Lenora feels about her. Lenora, Lenora gapes at you. Her eyes fill with tears again, but she hands over your phone. I can't believe how cold you are! I thought that maybe we were bonding, that maybe I could start to trust someone other than Pronya. But you didn't mean a single word of all those things you said. Lenora's face twists and contorts between rage and grief. When you make the phone slash scrapbook trade, she drops the knife in her, in her other hand and clutches the scrapbook and to her chest like it's one of the wrigglers in the Jade Blood Nursery. You, you don't feel guilty for doing what you had to do to escape unharmed. You can't help but wish that you had been able to actually help her. Clear to me now. Prudy is the only friend I will ever have. Make wild claims about your friendship with Bronya and save yourself. You and Bronya go way back. If Lenora is unfamiliar with your history, it might be because your friendship with Bronya predates hers. And actually... Part of why you texted her today was because your close friendship has recently been getting a little dread, you could say. Bronya needed someone to step in and fill the, ho fill the hole in her blood pusher left by Elward, after all. Considering the changing nature of your relationship, Bronya has been even more protected of protective of you than usual lately. Lenora doesn't seem impressed by your suit cultural knowledge, nor does she look intimidated. Her glasses reflect opaque and the murky cavern light as she step as she takes a step closer. Her claws, you've just noticed, are very sharp. Bronya is very t protective of those she pities. You've got that much right. If you're telling the truth, and I don't know that you are. Maybe she wanted to protect you. If she knew that you were here. Oh fuck, you fucked up with Winner and intercepted Bronya's phone and then Bronya has no idea you reached out, and you could be disposed of with none the right wiser. Oh no! Look what you made me do. You have no idea someone in a skirt that long could move so fast. Hmm. Anyways, that will be all for this time on Hive Swap Friend Sim. If you liked the video, like it. If you want to see more of my content, subscribe. And yeah, have a good day. Do what you do best.